Hi, we are going to talk about graphs with rate law. And I have to tell you, chemists love this. Professors, chemistry teachers love this. You want to have these three gra graphs memorized. So we have three different orders that we're going to look at. A zero order reaction, first order reaction, second order reaction. Now remember, when I'm saying order, this would be something like rate equals K times the concentration of A to the zero order. Now what's really, really interesting about a zero order, look at this, anything to the power of zero is one. So that means you can change that concentration all you want, increase it to a million, decrease it to um, one times 10 to the minus five concentration, doesn't matter. You take that to the order of uh, zero, it will always be one, which means in a zero order, you can change the concentration and the rate doesn't change. The rate's not impacted. So zero order means that a change in concentration does not change the rate. And remember delta, that means change. Okay, um, so notice our equation. You're going to have A sub T, that is going to be concentration at time T. Let's write that down. So this will be concentration at time T. Um, then we're going to have K, that's our rate constant. I'll bring this up here. Rate constant. T is our time. And then A naught, that's the initial concentration. Initial concentration. And we're going to use all of these symbols in our different orders. Um, okay, so if we were to graph this, so Y equals MX plus B, I purposefully wrote it this way so that we could graph it. There's my y-axis is um, concentration at time t, and here's my, uh, my x-axis, that's going to be t, that's your x right there. Um, of course, the a naught, that's going to be where it intercepts our, our um, y-axis, that y-intercept. Okay, in fact, we could write that down, that this right here, if I connected it up, that would be your a naught, the initial concentration. Okay, um, now, what is so neat about this, one of the things that chemists love about it is right there, M, the slope. What is the slope? It's the rate constant. So this right there is actually K. It's the rate constant, pretty cool. So all you have to do is rise over run, uh, Y1 minus Y2 divided by X1 minus X2, and you just found the rate constant K by having a graph, pretty cool. Um, okay, first order. This one we use a lot. This is all of our nuclear chemistry is going to be first order, and then of course a lot of our traditional chemistry falls in first order. A first order reaction, remember, would look like this. Rate equals K times the concentration of A to the first order. That you have a one right there. Um, okay, on this one, it's the natural log. When you integrate this, you get the natural log of A sub T equals minus KT plus natural log of A naught. Um, this is also going to be um, a decreasing slope, a negative slope, and very, very cool, the slope is your K value. Hugely significant that you'll be given a graph and asked to determine the rate constant just by doing rise over run, by finding the slope. Um, now, you could be given graphs, and here's what you've got to clue into, the axes. When you see natural log of the concentration of A, um, that means that this is first order. Right away, if you see a linear negative slope with natural log of A as the y-axis, you go, oh, first order. You have that memorized. So this is a first order reaction. And just from seeing this, you'd be able to write this. Yeah, it's a first order reaction. Um, now, I do want to show you, if this was first order, but not written as a natural log, here's what it would look like. This uh, graph would be an exponential decay if I um, just did the actual concentration over time, it's an exponential decay. And what would clue you into this that it's first order is that um, at every half-life, so at every 50% that's consumed, you have exactly the same amount of time. So for example, if I went from um, that time zero to, um, let's say two seconds and then four seconds, 
Um, let's say that I have 100 here. I come over here, I have 50 left. And then right here, I have 25. 100 and a half is 50. 50 and a half is 25. My half life would be two seconds on this. I got, that is a perfect first order half life. Um, so another way to identify first order is if it has just concentration versus time, exponential decay. And as you divide in half, divide in half, divide in half, it's the same increment of time. Um, you could also take the natural log of these and it will create a linear negative slope. Um, so those are directly related. All you do is take these values, negative log, and it would make it straight, make it linear. Um, you have to have the linear um, decay um, in order to find k. It has to be natural log of a in order to find the rate constant k. All right, so two clues on graphs when it comes to our first order. Okay, second order. So here's our equation, one over a sub t, that's the initial concentration, equals kt. Notice this one's positive, it's not negative, plus one over the initial concentration. This is a positive slope. Um, and notice the axis, one over a versus time. So if you see this linear positive slope and the y-axis is one over a, automatically you go, oh great, it's a second order reaction. And this is how you'd write it rate equals k times the concentration of a to the second order and you're expected to be able to identify that just from the graph same thing really cool notice our slope is indeed the rate constant k so something that chemists love that professors and chemistry teachers love is giving students these graphs because they're so powerful, expecting you to be able to do two things. Number one, identify is it zero order, first order, or second order rate law. And number two, being able to determine the rate constant just by calculating the slope, rise over run. Okay, so memorize those three graphs. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to show you. If you rearrange this, if I were to subtract the um, A initial over, um, I want to show you how this is written. It would be natural log, and this is just using laws of logs. A of t divided by A naught equals negative kt. You will see this first order rate um, equation rewritten like this in textbooks. So same thing, don't let that throw you, it's just the same thing. Okay, good, if you have other questions on rate equations, look under my playlist for rate, okay, thanks.